malarkey. 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 Oregon, ladies and gentlemen, right here up on the I-5, Interstate 5, at Tim Hyde coming to you from an undisclosed location, a, let's just say, a chain hotel. That's not my dad! Who's, speaking of dads, who's dad, grandfather, founder? Let's see if we can solve this riddle today. The founder of this hotel shares the same first name as the actor who played Mr. Drummond on Different Stroke. Different Strokes. <laughs> How about that? So dig deep, folks. Let's get to the bottom of what chain is honoring and hosting us this morning. Four office hours. It is 10 a.m. here. I'm still on the West Coast. I am hopefully coming in clean, loud and clear. Captain Carlin, can you confirm? Oh, yeah, loud and clear, like you're right here. Chester and Doubletree? I, uh, I am joined by, uh, I'm joined by uh, DJ Doug Pound. You're in there in the uh, studio, correct? Hey. Is it, um, is Vic with you? Where's Vic? I don't uh, see him. He's not shop. here. This is his mic here. I don't know what. Vic is a no-show. What do you mean? I thought you talked to him. You didn't, have you spoken with him this morning? Have you heard anything? I haven't heard a peep. Nope. Well, strange. We should be somewhat concerned, shouldn't we? I mean, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the hell? What are you doing here? Are you staying here at the hotel? Let's just, let's just pass it through, uh, through Medford, and uh, you know, here we are. Look at this, folks. I know Tim is out in the road by himself here. And I don't want to have to do all this. I was alone. No. Well, thanks for coming up. Yeah. I got, get, uh, do you want to take a minute and get a setup going? Yeah. Wow. Vic here at the Hilton. Oh, I gave it away. <laughs> uh, wait, Conrad Conrad Bain was the actor who played from Webster. From Webster, no, from wait, you said strokes. different strokes. No, different strokes. Was that the and Conrad Hilton? So Conrad Bain to Conrad Hilton. Is that what's going on? Is that yes? That was the show about the swimmers, Tim. Different strokes. I guess so. <laughs> well, listen, the, the, the cat's out of the bag. Uh, we were sort of, I mean, we were keeping it a, I was keeping it a secret a little bit. That, which, the, and I'll explain why. Um, cat? Is that what we're getting from? Cats out of the bag. Okay, good. I was, I was like, where's this? What's happening? <laughs> okay. Uh, a few months ago, you know, I think it was one of the episodes where we were doing uh, with uh, Colin Hay. Oh, Colin yeah. Hay. Was, hey. We did, hey. <laughs> we did Waterloo Sunset by the Kings, yeah? And uh, Vic was playing the piano, and I've known Vic is quite accomplished musician, as we all know. <laughs> and uh, see, I just love being in this register in the morning, especially after a rock show. I've got a nice, deep, quite bassy voice, you know. It's quite transformative. And so it's quite therapeutic and soothing for Please me to don't speak feel this bad way. Go to God's house. You know, but I... And I'm going to speak, I am going to speak this way for most of the show, you see, because it's great, it's great um, toning for the voice. And uh, anyhow, Vic had uh, displayed a great touch on the keys, yeah? Mm -hmm. He just kind of made nice, 
nice playing, you know? And I thought, well, I'm putting my band together. How nice would it be if Vic was able to come and do the piano parts and play keyboards and sing um, some, of the, some of the backing vocals, yeah? <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't know if he will want to, you know? I don't know if his wife will say it's all right to go on a row. <laughs> so a friend of you. I made a, an offer. I said, would you do it? Would, no. you, would you like to do it? And he hey, said, I'm just passing the message. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. I said, well, and that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the band. There's no other band, yeah? It's just me and Vic. And he's got the drum machines and the guitar sounds on the keyboards. So it's a bit of a one-man band, you know? No, he's, he's just the guy in the band. That's all. <laughs> and uh, but I thought well it would be nice for the audience to not know and the good news is no one listens or watches this show so the audience will still be surprised no, plain English so that's it's the news in plain English I'm having the time of my life and Matt and Doug you've seen the show now and, 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 and uh, were you proud to see Vic up there nah <laughs> Wow. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's great to see Vic up there. And then were you, you, you Doug, were you seething even... that you weren't up there? <laughs> no, I would not want to be up there. I I don't know how to play a harmonica or a keyboard or anything. <laughs> he was, it was cool that Vic had his own he got to come out center stage and do some and John Popper. Don't give anything away That's now. Very cool. All right. This is a non spoiler. This is a compliment I gave Vic right to his face after I saw it. I said the vocal blend on Buddy. You oh, and Vic yeah. was beautiful, and your uh, bassist uh, Ellie, right? Is that is that her name? Yeah, Ellie. Beautiful so, combination. Because all the greedy fuckers double up on me. Everything's vibrating, dude. Last night in San Francisco, home of the Grateful Dead and Hot Tuna and Jefferson Airplane, Canned Heat, Canned Heat, and uh, 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 Jefferson Starship, Starship. Um, they, it was rocking, and it was a great show. It was packed. Beautiful place, the Palace of Fine Arts. And we just took the crowd on a journey. It starts very negative, starts very abrasive, uh, and it just it goes from there towards a, a very warm and wonderful place. And I feel like I could also talk like Art Garfunkel in this way. And I can only imagine that we can't even put reverb on my voice because of the, the Hilton, uh, Hilton Honors does not allow for reverb in their conference rooms. The guy checking us in this wow. morning. Yeah, you can help yourself just, just so you know, no reverb. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, uh, let us in on a little uh, behind the curtain where he's like, we're like, can we get faster internet? Oh yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, you can just pick, you know, you can sign up. And Except pay for, for diamond, it. diamond, uh, yeah. diamond membership. Diamond members. And then, and he's like, you can try that. And then as I was leaving, he's like, but to be honest with you, it's the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah, but don't. It's a waste. <laughs> so throw your fucking diamond status in your toilet. Wow. And shit on it and then flush. <laughs> Matt, let's oh, do this. Can I, wait, speaking of toilets, can I tell you a real quick story? <laughs> I, when I came in here. <laughs> I came in here this morning to go to the bathroom, and I walk in the lobby. <laughs> but I, I, I walk in the lobby, or, and then I go into the bathroom, and it's one of those <laughs> automatic lights that go on when they see you. But <laughs> I walk in the bathroom, it's completely dark, <laughs> and, and then it comes on, and there's a guy in the stall. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't trigger it. It's shit in the dark. It was completely dark. <laughs> I can tell the paper. Oh no! Did he say something? <laughs> he was smoothed around. Like, oh, like he breathed when I came in. Like so, he was so he was, still he was that in the there lights so, were. <laughs> he was so long. Oh, that's funny. God. Maybe he was waiting to wipe until somebody came in, <laughs> so he could see what he was doing. <laughs> All right. Let's take a zoomer, Matt, and just welcome everyone. <gasps> to the show. Let's uh, let's start the day off with a pun from Kyle. Oh, Kyle Gas. Hi, my name's Kyle Heckler. No relation to 
Jim Heckler. Um, my pun, silence. My pun was, uh, so I used to, I used to, I used to run a, a door store down in the old West. And, uh, we used to have all sorts of people come and work for us. And, uh, Miss Dolly Parton, the, uh, if you're familiar, she used to work, uh, for us when she was quite young. And before she was the star she was today, she had difficulty uh, selling some of these doors. So uh, I would stand there and Dolly Parton would, would be in mid selling a door. And the man would say, I would love a door. I would love a door to, I would melt the door, anything. I just want a door. And I would say, Dolly, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I would say Salvador, Dolly. Salvador, Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I really do. I'll be honest with you. I think that's a hit. Doug? Salve, sell. Sell the door, Dolly. Salve a door. It oh, was really surreal door. having Dolly Parton work there. See, I would, I would even simplify that and just make it about like Dolly okay. worked at, a, at Home Depot okay. and she was in charge of like windows and things like that, entrances. And <laughs> her manager at the time was a real hard ass. And she would, you know, get, he would come up to her and be like, sail the door, Dolly. Sail the door, Dolly. Uh, that would work too. <laughs> Sal, Sal is, uh, well, I actually, Doug, your thoughts. Well, uh, you can't say d- the word Dolly is part of the punchline. And then you said Dolly Parton. So, Ms. Parton. That's right. Ms. Parton. I will pardon you for that. But next time, Nine, try to keep <laughs> the punchline out of the setup. Five. Nine to five star, the, the buxom Ms. Parton, people might say. The pounding. Some, right? But a, 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 people were obsessed with her boo-boo, be, boobies they still in are. the 80s. Yeah. That's all that people would talk about as a child on the, on the, as a child on the playground. And now, like 40 years later, people are like, oh, her music's good, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, she also is a great songwriter, one of the great American songwriters. And a great, just a great kind of philanthropic person, too, right, T? The pounding. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> she funded the vaccine research that is working so well. True, my parents got coronavirus. I'm bitter because I got the corona, and I thought I was, you know, I was, I'll just speak candidly, I was like, all right, this wasn't too bad. I had like a couple of days of feeling like I got a cold. This virus ain't that serious. And then it went away. And then it's, it's just like, I just haven't had time to like fully recover. So I just still have like this, just, I feel my energy is good, but I just have like this congestion. <coughs> right? <coughs> I just hate it. I just wanted it out. <coughs> it's me every morning. But... God bless. God, God, watch over us and make sure that it doesn't get worse and I don't end up on a ventilator like so many have. But my voice is, is uh, this is just because it's here, it's 10 a.m. And, you know, it, the, whole, the, the voice is just going to, throughout the day, it continues to blossom, blossom and open up and provide more range. And it's okay if I fart. And then I do my throat coat and I do my warm ups and everything. And by the time the show is, it sounds beautiful. Ask your guy to come out of the shadows, and pretty soon, I swear to you, you you start getting a vision. I heard this voice, and she said, "You don't have anything to be afraid of. I came from I come from God." And I thought, "Yeah, right." And I went screaming down the steps to my grandmother. <laughs> All right, let's do the city of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sylvia Brown. Mother. I got distracted because I, t- I tweeted, I retweeted Judd, Judd Apatow. He had uh, tweeted a uh, uh, Simon and Garfunkel documentary that looks good. It's called The Story of Bridge Over Troubled Waters. It's like a 30-minute little making of that song, the story behind nice. that song. I'd love to watch that today. And I, I didn't even retweet, retweet it. I just liked it. I 
Loved it. And uh, in my mentions is one Maureen McCormick. Now, do you know who Maureen McCormick is, Doug? Uh, oh, I do. I mean, Vic. I do. It's Doug, 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 do you know who Maureen McCormick is? Yes, yeah, she's the heiress to the Spice Empire. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. That is one one of the Bradys, right? Oh. Marsha, 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 Marsha Brady. Mm-hmm. She's back. She's on Twitter now. Marsha, the middle daughter. Yeah. Wow. But I don't know why I'm seeing that as a notification to me. Interesting stuff, Twitter. Wow. Elon's got to get in there. Um, the City of the Day is brought to you by... Nyuk, nyuk, gnocchi. You knew this was coming. Do you love gnocchi but hate that bloated feeling you get after you wolf it down? Now you can eat and laugh with nyuk, nyuk, gnocchi. Nyuk Nyuk Gnocchi is the result of a wonderful merger between laughter chemicals and a potato surplus from the Household Delight Corporation. I'm Nyuk Nyuk joking. Nyuk Nyuk Gnocchi has the same texture and some of the same flavor as gnocchi with an interesting sauce made from a liquid substance which is not yet illegal. The substance will make you laugh, guaranteed, delivering your mind from the distended feeling. And it can even be considered an exercise to keep the pasta gut restrained with abdominal, abdominal tightening from laughter. Office Hours customers get free shipping now when they go to nyuknyuknyuki.laughing slash chemical. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How'd you like that, Doug? You skipped over one of the yays. I keep trying to... I, know, but I, don't, I, could, I saw the yay and bailed on it right away. I said, nah. I don't do yays. Thank you. What am I, uh, John Hancock at the uh, <laughs> signing the declaration? Ah! Thank you. Yay. <laughs> I vote yay. On this. I'll sign it first. Um, <laughs> let me ask you, Matt, who, yes. is this, who has the city of the day today? Sylvia. Hey, there, Sylvia. Hello. Hello, Sylvia. How you doing? Doing all right. I'm doing okay. How about you? What's the city? Where you call? What is the city? <laughs> okay, uh, I am in La Paz, Bolivia. Yes, Whoa. an international city of the day for Christ's sake. <laughs> Bolivia. Shall I say Bolivia um, in a very sensual way? Shall I say it in a very sensual way? Go for it. Bolivia. Oh. Not too bad, huh? Bolivia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about La Paz. That was a little French, Tim. Yeah. Um, so uh, right now there's a like a four-day-long holiday happening, so there's going to be like a lot of parades and dancing. And uh, to be honest, I don't even know what it is because I've I've – been here for three weeks visiting my family, and there's already been like five holidays. Oh, they love it. And I, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty great. I so, was, uh, but at this point, I've just lost track of. I don't want to lump Bolivia into the entire Southern Hemisphere. You know, that's a very disrespectful thing to do, but I will only to share a story of when I was uh, spending time in Mexico, south of uh, Mexico City in a very small town. Uh, many years ago, I, uh, it was around the holidays, Christmas holidays, and there was this thing, this, some holiday, some celebration that went on all weekend, where all through the day and all through the night, <laughs> there were just like cannons going off. Like, <laughs> yeah. cannons in this valley, so it would just be like, <laughs> like every half hour, all night. Okay. That is the way. I love it. What do we, it's what do we know about Bolivia? Let's look it up on the map. I just want to, it's, it's, I think it's, are things, are you visiting, uh, you, you live in America, but you're just visiting family? Yeah, I live in San Francisco. And, um, oh, and so, there. why didn't you uh, adjust your travel so you could come see me last night? Um, I should have. Why? You're right. If I <laughs> Sorry. 
What's your name again? <laughs> Sylvia. So, that was too good. Bolivia is a landlocked uh, country. Isn't that a little strange? It's a little weird. We do have a gigantic lake, though, which is kind oh, of like ocean. But don't you think it shares a border of the lake? Don't you think it shares a border with uh, Peru in a lot of ways? Do I see that? In a, in a, a lot of ways, you could say that it does, that we do share so, uh, a lot of things with Peru. But, and you have beautiful mountains there, isn't that true? <laughs> the most incredible mountain. That is actually very true. Are you a lawyer now, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> is it true, is it true um, that there's flamingos running around Bolivia? Yeah, uh, yeah. in the salt flats, there's these um, like three different species of flamingos that only live there. Awesome. I'm just scrolling through uh, Wikipedia. What else? <laughs> Doug, I could see you going down to uh, Bolivia for a, va for a vacation soon. Uh, you I would should. Love to. It's beautiful. I like we lakes. We have a socialist government. There's a what government? We have a socialist government. Cool. Oh, really? Ooh, we have, there's a socialist uh, party in power, I should say. How's it like working out? Pretty stable down there, correct? <laughs> Relatively to other countries down there? Well, like uh, for 13 years, Evo Morales was our president, and he, well, I mean, he, like, his party eliminated a lot of poverty and nationalized a lot of resources, which is great. And then there was a coup that happened around the same time that COVID started, and that was a fucking mess. But the coup is over. So now the uh, the Maz party is back in power, and the crazy lady who was head of the coup, she's going to jail for like 30 years now or something. Oh, wow. Okay. So you guys are taking care of business. Oh, we are. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen, folks. Now, if you come to some of my shows this, this uh, summer, last night we had a member of the DSA. Do you know about this? They were at yeah. the show. Um, they were setting up a table and they were really, I, the focus was on abortion, uh, resources and, and making, and, you know, so, uh, donating money so that, you know, we can, uh, support, uh, reproductive health, but it's sort of like, yeah, why can't we just, why can't more things just be in the public domain? Why can't more things be, you, you know, we should treat more, we should treat things that we love and use and need every day as utilities that we, that are for the good of the people that 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 are baseline things that shouldn't be privatized that shouldn't be you know a quick way to get uh to get quick cash for some jackass like conrad hilton shouldn't conrad provide me with lodging on the road as i travel <laughs> that should lodging should be free for everybody well certain sort of baseline lodging <laughs> Why not? I mean, we're only here for a short time, Doug. I mean, you can't take it with you. I'm down. I'm down. Are people I'm down. are people um, somehow under the delusion that you can take it with you? Because what the hell are we doing? Let's just try to be happy. Let's learn. Let's uh, let's enjoy our time and make it as enjoyable for as many people as possible, baby. Tim, what does a public uh, hotel really? look like? A public hotel. Well. I don't want to get into the details of that, Doug. Or is it, it would, kind of a big gymnasium with beds that you can just crash? Like at. a, like a, yeah, like a hostel. You ever stay in a hostel, Doug? Yeah, I think I did. I stayed in a hostel in Edinburgh, Scotland, in my college years. Uh, Sylvia, are you staying in a hostel or are you staying with friends? Oh no, I'm staying at uh, my family's house, the house that I I grew up in. in oh, Amazing. Well, Sylvia, thank you so much for joining us and providing this, the uh, city of the day. It was lovely to talk to you. Yeah, and I'm so sad that I missed your tour. I'm traveling exactly the same time that your tour is, but hopefully I sometime you. soon. I just, I'm disappointed in you, but I will say also that I do think that we're at this, that this is the beginning of something big, this tour. I feel like it will not be the only time you get the opportunity to see it. It feels... Like something's about to bust. Something's about to bust. <laughs> so maybe we'll get down the road. Like you could come down to LA in uh, right September, too. I right? love Glendale. 
I mean, I have a ton of friends in Glendale, you know. Oh, and good, uh, that's a good note. We just put on sale tickets for <laughs> the El Rey in Los Angeles, uh, September Lovely. 9th. So, oh, that's around my birthday. That could be something there you, you go. do. Chords that could be you stay at the yeah. compound, no problem. <laughs> okay, thanks, Sylvia. We'll mm -hmm. let you go. Say hello to your dad. I will. We'll Who owns the El Rey, Tim? El Rey Hubbard? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, why don't we check in on the hotline? We haven't for the sound. We tested that out. Oh, here we go. Somebody, I think they were at the this show last night. Bobby? Bobby, 480, you're live on the air. Hey, Steve, this is Bobby Charleston. How you doing today? All right, Bobby, how can I help you? <laughs> well, I was at the show last night. Uh, I'd like to say it was incredible, but unfortunately for me, I stood in that merch line forever, uh, ran back to my seat, barely made it in time for you to shove me into my seat and yell, fuck you in my face. You were so <laughs> angry with me, T, and I traveled down to San Fran from Mendocino just to see you. And, you know, it, it's really put a strain on my heart. I'm so sorry to hear that. It sounds like you're being disruptive, though. It sounds like maybe you had it coming. Would you, would you, uh, would you uh, surrender to that? I, I, I would completely disagree. And how dare you, Tim? I stood in that merch line forever, dropped my hard earned dollars on a beautiful, brand new copy of High School, which is available on vinyl for everybody to buy in slushy blue, pop rocks blue and red. And what I saw earlier today was a limited edition record store day clear red vinyl. And I highly recommend everybody purchases all three copies. It's kind of doesn't Matt doesn't this sound a little like John Worcester That's doing a immediately what I thought. <laughs> well, I do recall. I didn't. I only did that. Uh, I only got in one person's face. I guess it was you. It was, it was definitely me, and uh, you know, it, it was a thrill. Uh, but for me, the thrill of the night was Mr. Vic Berger coming out. He's your own That's personal, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, I, I don't even know what he is, but he was incredible. I, I, I love his vocals. I agree with what was said earlier with the harmonies, but man, I he love was uh, those ivories. I loved it. I leave, no, I leave it all on the floor. I give everything. I give 120%. And I'm up there for two hours, and I work my ass off. Yeah, and then you come in on this show and say, the highlight of the night was the fucking keyboard player now? Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Definitely the highlight for me. Yeah. Yes, I, I mean maybe if you were a little bit nicer than me, it would have went a different way. But unfortunately, you had to scream in my face. We started off on a bad foot, but then Big well, Burger came out and saved the entire show for me. Thank God. Ah, the only no. thing that could have made it better is if is if DJ Doug Pound was in the house, Mr. Fa Fa Flus and Hop. Victor Burger. Yeah. Now that well, sounds right. I know, and and listen, if this you didn't think it crossed my mind how to how to incorporate the great one dj into the into the tour it did not cross my mind <laughs> no it did but we can't give everybody everything i'm working well, on i'm trying thing? to get incorporated into somebody's shows i'm working on yeah, it. yeah you will um listen the other big thing that happened last night which we found out later was apparently and this hasn't been fully confirmed but we we, we did get a report that it was alleged that a woman uh, broke her leg at the show last night. During the show. During the Ooh. show. Do you know about this? During sir? the show, I did. I did not. I did not see that or hear about it. No. Well, I have a bit in the show where I bring a baseball bat and start wailing on people. And no, I thought it was a fake bat, but it was the real one. No. Um, no, seriously. Apparently, a woman was uh, making her way back to her seat and. Uh, Tripped on a step, and she's listening. Yeah, I want to reach out to see if I can send her a box of Russell Stover chocolates. Yeah, absolutely. 
But in all serious, T, you did a great job last night. The set was incredible. This was the first time I've gotten to see you play music, and I've been trying to get to one of the shows in L.A. for a while. So thank God I finally got to this one. I had seen you do your stand-up routine before, but your albums are incredible. Uh, my personal favorite is what the Broken Hearted do, but uh, I loved everything about that show last night. I was glad to be there, and I wish you a lot of luck on the rest of the tour. The, the rest of the country doesn't know what they're missing out on if they don't already have tickets in their pocket. Well, thank you very much for that ringing endorsement. I appreciate it. I do feel the same way. I feel like if you're not if you're not on board yet, then uh, there's something wrong with you. And you, what you're interested in is like, you know, there are people that are obviously going to come see the show and are going to have a great time. And then there are people that are would rather go to a Mal Malcolmore show or a, you know Macklemore or a, you know Fifty Cent or who else? You know, Imagine Dragons. These people are the ones that I'm almost grateful they're not going to be at the show because who wants that crowd? Yeah. No, nobody wants that crowd. That crowd is crap as far as I'm concerned, Big T. <laughs> I hear you. Well, thanks. thanks. I'm going to let you go. Thanks, Bobby. Because, Matt, where are we at with the Thank show? Thank you, guys. You know, oh, well, first, all the best. First, yeah. Speaking of Doug, actually, Bobby, you should listen to this. Uh, Doug and I will be in Chicago next Thursday, the 21st, with a special movie screening night. Links to that in the bio. We're going to be showing Police Academy 3. <laughs> yes. We're going to be showing the new episode of The Compound, which Vic and Tim did not comment on yet. Which well, is I haven't I mean, Oddly we, enough, we, he sent it. I, I we started got the link. typing it. I, I was laughing, crying. We got the link last night, like during the show. What am I going to rush, <laughs> rush off stage, towel off, and get into my screening yeah, room? Yeah, you had time to send that 10 minute influencer video. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is. <laughs> Yeah, you towel off and you watch the new edit. <laughs> this, is, this is a difficult conversation. You see that transition? And speaking of difficult, Tim, do you want to bring on our next, uh, our next guest? Yes, our next guest. Difficulty man. Is, I'm, geez, I'm, kind of, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to let the boys breathe here. Sorry, I couldn't tell if that meant you, you couldn't find it. Tim, do you think no, that we understand. are in like a vibrational... Superstruct like a, in, in like a, a simulation is a vague way of saying. It, but do you think we're in like a pattern? <laughs> I'm gonna let I'm gonna seed the air to that drop whenever it comes up. <laughs> uh, difficulty man is here, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, difficulty man. Would we please allow this difficulty man into the office? Hello. What is? Do I speak into this? Am I sounding okay? You sound great. I can hear you. Wonderful. Oh. How many people are listening to this? How many people? We've got yes. a, probably uh, about a couple thousand. Wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Connecting me to audiences far and wide, I use my oh. newfound platform to declare, workers of the world, rise! Overthrow your parasitic bosses and own the means of production. This includes you, Vic, and Doug. Young man, I suggest you arm yourself, for your time as an indentured servitude is over. Naturally, I myself will not be joining the revolution, as I am on vacation. Many of you are probably wondering, who am I? An excellent question. Some have accurately described me as a Kendall, come to life. However, make no mistake, I have zero attraction to Barbie. She's my sister! Besides, my sexual appetite tends to crave a more second-dimensional spice. Thank you for having me on, Tim. That's, uh... Interesting to have you here. Yes, and it took a long time to get here, as I'm on the no-fly list after developing a pack mentality with the TSA dogs. I traverse this great land by foot, populated by bison, lamb, crickets. I've also come across catching one of the most beautiful rarities of this continent, which I brought <laughs> for you today. Now, how do I give it to you? I don't know. I don't. Matt, do you want to help him give that to? I can't. I mean, I'm in a different location physically, a, so I won't be able to receive that. You're not here physically? No, sir. I'm in uh, Medford, Washington, My. in the conference room of the uh, Hilton uh, Hotel. Hmm. Okay. It appears Tim has been kidnapped and taken into an undisclosed location, and what I can only assume is for ransom. Well, I can assure you, dear audience. 
We will not negotiate with terrorists, even if it means to the demise of our beloved host. Having never met Vic, I can only assume he's a figment of my imagination. However, Tim, I'm hoping I can get this to you very, what very quickly. It? It's a fish. Okay. <laughs> Is it well, a gold fish or? It's a gold. It's, like... it's one of the most dangerous of the North American continent. I what? nearly died catching it for you, Tim, as I'm deathly allergic to this beast. Oh, wow. You're allergic to goldfish. I've never heard of that. Yes. Their scales make me flare up. Now. Oh, well, I, you... I, I certainly didn't need a goldfish, so I, I'm sorry you went to the trouble. Do you have... <laughs> Tim, do you have a bowl somewhere? I've been feeding it pieces of my skin in order to keep it alive. <laughs> However, it now hungers for the rest. Ah, yeah. I didn't know goldfish were predators. Yes. Tim, I'm quite disappointed you are not accepting this gift as a seemingly open, open-minded man. I would accept it uh, if I was there, and I, I will accept it in my absence. I could, uh, I, I, by proxy, will uh, give Matt, uh, Captain Carlin, permission to accept the gift on my behalf. How about that? Hmm. I'd, I'd prefer not to, actually. What? Hmm. Okay. I'll have you all know that we have explored more of our universe than the very depths of our ocean. I suppose that's why I tipped over a bird fat bath the other day, exploring the mysteries of water. So, you really won't accept this gift? I, well, Matt, you're not accepting it? Why don't you just accept it, you know? Like, what's the big deal? I really prefer not to. Mm. So I don't care for it. I don't want the responsibility. I have enough responsibility in my life. Well, Doug. Doug, would you accept it on my behalf? Please? I'll take it. I'm just going to release it back into the pond at the at the Ar- arboretum, probably. You won't give it to Tim. Okay. Yeah, I will. Wonderful. Yeah. Hmm. You're leaving after this, right? Yes. I'll le- I'll give it to Tim. <laughs> Wonderful. Perfect. Well, that went quite successfully, despite difficulties in my life. I seem to have difficulty connecting with others. Perhaps it's due to the fact I get into an argument with every child I interact with. Maybe it stems from when conversing with adults, I use tickling as an expression of agreement. Oh, when, yeah, don't tickle people if they don't, they're not, you know, generally don't tickle people. But. Well, when, one lo- when loved ones sit me down to calmly explain why this is inappropriate, I lash out and bite them. Oh, dear. Yes. TMI. Oh. Wait, you bite? TMI? Perhaps it's because whenever I make love, I get distracted and begin pretending that I'm an airplane. I just can't help but make the sounds. <laughs> what What's sound? What sound is that? Me? Jet? I am sorry. I could not uh, display this inappropriate act in front of a wide audience. Who, who, who are you making love with? My partner. Okay. Partners of various kinds of all different dimensions, especially the second. Now. Two D partners. Yes. So two like D Bart. Perhaps on a screen or something. Not on a screen, but on a flat plane, where we are both equal, stand tall. Okay, I'm ready to take the fish away. <laughs> Wonderful. Perhaps I have difficulty connecting with others. Because whenever I get into a disagreement with someone, I bend down and try to tie their shoes together. (laughs) Yeah, that would be annoying. Yes. But I try to do nice things, like hold doors for people and insist they enter before me, despite it not being their destination at all. When they politely decline, I sprint past them, heading towards the next available door to open. Many people just don't give me a chance. Maybe it's because it's taking me years of physical therapy to get me to walk upright. Instead of crouching very low to the ground and swinging my arms back and forth as I walk. And despite that therapy, I've recently returned to my bird stance. So, Tim, I find that with you absent from your home, I've decided to take it upon myself to guard it with my life. Oh, no re- no reason to do, no need to do that. Thank you. Difficulty. I am already armed with one of the rocks outside of your home <laughs> and prepared to commit violence on any sort of intruder whatsoever. I would wish that to not be the case. I would wish you would not do that. Thank you. Tim, I will guard your house with my life. And like a hermit crab, I too have taken refuge in this now abandoned dwelling. 
Okay. Inside your recycling can, of course, as it was sanitation day today. I'm a man of simple needs. I don't need the luxuries you've grown accustomed to. So, Tim, as a thank you on your show, for having me on your show, I will be guarding it. I will probably be buried here, defending oh. your home. Thank you. I don't, you're going to hide out in my trash can and with a rock and throw it at someone if they come towards my house? I, mean, I already have. You're a pesky mailman. Oh, <laughs> uh, please. Emancipating us to... from the Imperial United States Postal Service. Please, I, I would, I would, uh, Matt, could you try to talk him off the ledge here? And I'd prefer him to not be uh, guarding my house when we wrap the show up. My knobs are a bit antiquated. <laughs> Well, there's, Matt? there's there's a there's a security system in place where yeah. we're fully secured. Well, Tim, I actually right. can't leave okay. as I've already developed a symbiotic relationship with one of your houseplants. I urinate in it, racing it with fertilizer, and in return, it gives me an allergic reaction, okay. an asphyxiation <laughs> that I cannot break. Okay. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man, but if you don't leave my premises. After you've been uh, asked to, we'll have to alert the authorities. What authorities? Who has authority over your own domain? Uh, <laughs> well, A, I do. And B, if I consider you a trespasser, uh, the, the uh, local police department will, uh, be, will intervene and, and, and ensure that you are no longer trespassing on my property. Tim, this okay? is a betrayal I've never even anticipated. I've traversed this whole land just to get to you. And you don't show up, you're not here. I assume you're kidnapped, and you are not. You left on your own volition. So what are we to do? We are to uh, let you go and, uh, and ensure that, and ensure what was that? that you... Tim, do you have voices in your walls? I. We'll grab a no, sledgehammer. No. I could probably break it open right now. No, 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 no. Matt, just... can, you, can you please Whoa, uh, restrain the difficulty man? You could you restrain him or exit, uh, escort him out of the, the studio and, and off my property? Uh, I don't want to get hit with that rock. Perhaps it can, this can pick up on the vibrations nearby. Wes or Luke or some, can somebody uh, make sure that he doesn't start throwing rocks at people? Maybe just put the rock. Can we put the rock away and yes. let you Thank you. get on with your... Better. The rock or whatever it is. Absolutely. <laughs> this concludes my speech, and I well, thank, thank you, you for having me. Man. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, and, and it seems like your intentions are sound, and you're trying to do the, the best for me. I appreciate that, but please respect my wishes. Thank you, Difficulty Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. I do wish him the best. Did you... Did you want to tell some some jokes still? Difficulty, man. Maybe in the second half of well, the show. We can do. A, we can take a caller. Okay. Well, I'll I'll decide. <laughs> that. Hello. I think yeah, we should turn, over, turn the show over to Difficulty, man. <laughs> Let him be there. Oh, I know what happens when I'm not in the room. <laughs> the cat's away. The no mice to play. To the show in, in check. Uh, yeah. Let's Come check on. in with. Um, N uh, Nick. Mm. Nick. Nick had you got some it. questions for us, right, Nick? Nick? Nick, what you doing, huh? Yeah. How you doing, Nick? Fucking hey, I'm Nick. Good. Fucking guy. Coming to you from uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Ooh, Barrymore yeah. Theater coming up next yes. week. Next week. And that's my topic because I don't know what to wear to see you, Tim. Uh, Do you have any uh, fashion crazy. advice? Yeah, Vix, Vix, uh, talk about your. Per well, I'll give you some advice, uh, real what quick. Not, I think wherever you, whatever makes you uh, feel comfortable. Not a black tie event. Mm -hmm. Summertime. I want you to be comfortable. You got to anticipate there's going to be some air conditioning in that theater. But I would call the theater and ask them what their air conditioning policy is. <laughs> I, I made the mistake of going to the show overdressed. Oh, it was hot. Oh, and it was, it was hot, hot and I, I wanted to just be naked in there. Yeah. So but, come with layers. Be, wait, maybe wear a vest, like a black vest that a magician would wear. Put that on the outside and then perhaps 
a vest on the outside. Yeah, and then a button-down short sleeve that you could probably take three buttons okay. down. And with a puka shell no necklace. No sleeves. And then, oh, uh, yeah, and okay. then like uh, probably some kind of Burlington Coat Factory coat on the top layer. <laughs> Is this four layers now? Let's talk about Vic's wardrobe choices. Let's go. Uh, you, what were your What was your thought yeah. process? I just like I kind of wanted a uniform where I could just like not think about what I'm wearing. So I found a, a, a yellow uh, soccer ref shirt at a thrift <laughs> store, and I bought it. It was the most comfortable shirt I've ever worn. I oh. think I had it on last week or whatever. So I've been wearing that a lot, and then and then I've been wearing that at the at the shows uh, the Legion. <laughs> but and then I bought like three more of them to have for the you know I could just wear them all the time. But Tim wasn't a fan of my of my bright. Uh, it was so it, it, it was so shirts. bright, and it pulled focus from the star of the show. Me, there's this big giant, you know, bright yellow blob. Oh, there's a picture of it. it so well, yellow. Tim, you're just you just you you're too muted. You got to get some colors popping. You know, well, I can't compete with that yellow. What do I wear? This do? hot pink. You can wear yeah, this hot red. pink fuchsia. No, I, it, listen. Vic get got the message. I was yeah. oh, I got it clear, yeah. And and he's wearing nice, reasonable Western shirts. Western shirts, pretty and, good. And I went out and got like like five of those, and now I'm good to go. Yeah, you don't want to think about what people are wearing on stage, you know. I, I will agree. It was a bit distracting. Thank you. Finally, <laughs> somebody's on my side in this world. Somebody, I hope he kept the hat though. He kept the hat. hat did, oh, I kept the hat. Well, at the first night I I bought an actual like. Cowboy hat. Real, like oh. a cowboy. That looks, that looks good. I like the cowboy hat. Yeah, so I, I didn't bring it because it was so heavy. And yeah. I was like, I don't know. And I was sweating. Like I don't know crazy. what these people do with their cowboy hats because they're so, <laughs> they're, so uh, they're big and they, yeah. like, you can't, if you wear a cowboy hat, I would love for somebody to chime in on this. You're a, let's say you're a cowboy in this, you're a Texas guy. You wear your cowboy hat all I'm day. Just and you, a country boy. And you drive a truck, which I assume you drive a truck or a car. You get in that car and you can't you can't put your head back. You gotta take the hat off. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are you wearing the hat for? No, you could you can't wear it in the car. There's no, no. way. And yeah, it's. I, and I asked the guy. I was like, hey, um, so how do you clean this? Because like I get the sweatiest forehead, and he just like just he's like, nope, you no, don't. He just like shakes his head. I'm like, oh, okay. Tim, uh, someone in the yeah. chat, someone in the chat had a great idea. Is uh, you show up nude and then c clothe yourself with merch. <laughs> like, so that's what I was gonna ask too. Um, what? what? <laughs> require oh, Mary? require the, your crowd to show up nude and then they oh, have yeah. to buy the merch and then you you, should, you could sell pants, oh, good idea. Sh sh you know, socks, <laughs> yes. and shoes, and all. Yeah. What do you think about people wearing your merch? Yeah, I want to. Would be good for the merch table is like a mannequin with the with the merch on, you know, like at a like at a clothing store. You never see that. No, at, you don't. You never see that at a merch. <laughs> table. You gotta sell pants. Is it cool to wear the band's t shirt to their own show? Well, oh no, I mean, uh, we're talking about something slightly different here. I think you're saying the audience should buy. Our merch, for, like they should come to the show nude. Yes, that's what I'm and saying. And just do oh, like that, a uh, partnership with Uniqlo and just a have changing like room a changing something. room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or no, they could show up with clothes that they want to donate. You know, something they would give to a thrift store, and then you can make it also be a clothing drive. And then well, the one idea out. I had that I was flirting with was like because I I I generally don't like packing and having like tons of clothes and you know like sorting through a suitcase every day. And so I was like, well, what if I just didn't bring any clothes, you know, maybe like a backpack with a few couple items in there. And then I put out the message every day. It was like, somebody bring me clothes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, bring me your Super band good. shirt, bring me new <laughs> underwear, bring me some socks. Something you donate. Then it would be hard to regulate. Like then you'd have like a hundred pairs show up, but so don't bring clothes to my, and I don't, that feels wasteful. All right, so I'm not doing it. Well, no, maybe the ex, the surplus could go to the Salvation Army or something. Yeah, but I, what am I going to put on old Salvation Army underwear? <laughs> no, they bring you washed, used stuff, and it's like it's a clothing I recycle. Want, I will be using new underwear every day. Okay, but my underwear. But that's all. That's all you bring is just fresh like, underwear. 
You think you could uh, Elvis? Like you could beat Elvis's record? Oh. Like if maybe someone will, you could sell it then for charity? That's but like true. Elvis's uh, Elvis wore uh, tidy whities in a 1977 show, and he soiled them. Ugh. And somehow somebody got them and and framed them and oh <laughs> sold them for fifteen grand. And they got the skid marks around there, big, Vic. Big, big skids. Does big anybody? Skids. Does anybody? Yeah, do you just, have that? I the, can't uh, pull it up here. Matt's got the image. I think. Yeah, we got the image. Hold on a second. Oh, thank God. It's, was, I gave I, it a I thumbs don't. down in the chat. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Let me see those. All right, I want to see the skids. Go in tighter. Oh, yeah, there's a close up. There ah, we go. There we the go. Close up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, go down, go down. No, the second shot. Presley. The second image. I know, I know. Really. <laughs> Wait, are they soiled in the front? It looks like maybe he... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, oh, what, oh, yeah. that's confusing. There's a lot of sweat there and... Oh. Big blood. Well, yeah, it could be. Because I wonder what toilet paper was nice, like in the 70s. Do you think it was coarser? I don't want to give too much away, but I had a, 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 I have a really good Elvis chunk in my stand-up routine. I think you're probably going to enjoy. Um... Do we like music? It's a question I also Dude, ask in my uh, stand-up. Sweet soul. Anybody here like music? We love it. We love it. All right. Well, shall we transition to our musical guest today? Definitely. What's the guy's name from uh, from uh, that British uh, music show? The uh, Jules show? Holland. No, no, the other one um, from the seventies. John Peel. No, no. Uh, Top of the Pops. Come on. He's British? Yeah, it's uh, um, the, the chat will know what I'm talking about. Guy with a beard. Gregory uh, Humper? No, Graham Norton. Name, name of the show. show. Um, beard, beard old Grey Whistle Test. Old Grey Whistle Test. Thank oh, you, yes. Matt. Thanks, Galantini. Yes. I will be. What's the guy's name? Old Grey. Yeah. What? Old Grey. It's his whistle test. No. Bob Harris, they say. Hello, everyone. Jimmy it's Seville. Bob. Hello. Hello, the everyone. Great. Jimmy said, Hello, everyone. Jimmy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Old Grey Whistle Test. We have a wonderful music act for you today. The incomparable Ian Sweet is here. <laughs> Shall we speak with her first? Yes. Nice to finally meet you. You're doing all right? Yeah. What's the, what's the accent? How did you begin <laughs> music? Was it always something you ach- you aspired towards? Yeah, kind of something I always aspired towards. The new records come out, isn't it? An EP. <laughs> Where can people find it? Is it available all, all over the world? The whole damn world. What song are you going to be playing for us today? I'm going to play a song called Fight. It's on the EP. All right. Thanks for. This is Ian Sweet with a new song. I can't, couldn't hear the word. I couldn't hear the name of it. It's called Fight. Fight. Oh, fight. Thank yeah. You. This is Ian Sweet with Fight. Every day is the same I ran out of things to say But I keep loving you Like it's the only thing That keeps the earth from spinning Thank you. 
Thank you, Ian. I think Matt. Yeah. Would, I don't. Should I call you? You could call me Jillian or Ian. Jillian. The Ian, Ian is the end of the Jillian. That's your name. <laughs> it's different when you under your recording name. Was that a choice you made uh, for any particular reason, or was it just sort of your way of life? <laughs> now listen. <laughs> Alex. Uh, Matt, shall we take a break? Pop Pop has to peep peep. <laughs> yes, indeed. Doug, you got a moment. tune ready or you want me to play one um, from the list? I got sure, smells I good. Need. Can you play one? But before we go, can I play? I forgot to play the jingle for the Nuck Nuck Yoki. <laughs> yeah, we have the floor. The boss is gone. It's party time. Here That's why we have Lays. Nuck Nuck Yoki. Nuck Nuck Yoki. Nuck Nuck Yoki. Nuck Nuck Yoki. 